Hello everyone, and welcome back to the series on MATLAB programming. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the first things you learn how to do in a differential equations course, and that is construct the slope field um, for a first order differential equation. Now keep in mind some people will refer to these graphs as directional fields, but I believe that slope fields are a little bit more appropriate for a variety of reasons for which I won't get into here. So I'll just be calling them slope fields from here on. So the very first thing that we need to do is to decide a differential equation that we want to construct the slope field for. Um, so you can choose any first order differential equation that you want, um, but I'm going to choose a, a particular nice one that I actually know the solution to ahead of time. Um, and that's the differential equation dy over dx or y prime is equal to sine of x minus y. Um, if you've already learned how to solve some basic differential equations, um, this is a first order linear and homogeneous differential equation whose solution is actually quite easy to find uh, analytically. But let's assume that you actually don't know how to solve differential equations and you want to get some feel for what the solutions of this differential equation actually looks like. Right? So let's first off create our function handle for this differential equation. So let's call this right hand side f of x y, right? So f is going to be equal to a function of potentially both x and y. Some people will use t and x as your variable, but I'm just going to use x and y um, since it's usually a good starting point for coding. So my differential equation is going to be y prime is equal to sine of x minus y, but again you could choose whatever differential equation makes you happy. The next thing that I want to do is decide the domain that I want to graph this on. And let's assume that the xy domain, let's do capital letters for both, is going to be equal to, and let's do a two-dimensional mesh grid for this, my x's is going to be minus 2 to 2 uh, in horizontal spacing of 0 0.1, so that's minus 2 to 2 horizontal spacing, de delta x is equal to 0 0.1, and then I'm going to do the same for delta y and y, so minus 2 to 2 in spacing of uh, 0.1, right? So that is going to be my y vector, and that's going to create a mesh grid for that. And then dy dx dy dx, or you could just write yp for y prime, is going to be equal to f of x y. So it's going to plug in these points into this function, which is the slopes of our solutions y. Right? So it's going to give you a bunch of little segments or slopes at each of those points, and then we're going to uh, create a plot for those slopes. So that gives us all of our derivative values at our points, and now we want to sort of sketch um, what those flow lines look like uh, for particular solutions, as long as we have initial condition um, to sort of model from. So let's just open up a blank figure, let's call it figure 1, and the function that we're going to use to plot all these lines is the same function that we used uh, about back when we were doing, say, level curves for uh, three-dimensional surfaces or uh, contour plots um, in multivariable calculus, for example. Um, so we're going to be using the quiver function, so it's going to be three variables, x, y, and then our z. So this correspondence, this next value, in particular one's size of yp, it's just going to give you a bunch of uh, one values um, for which the derivative values are going to be plotted on top of. If you don't want to get into the technicalities here, you can just run this code and it will do exactly what you want. And in order to make this uh, box usually scalable in terms of the right aspect ratio, axis tight is usually a good choice um, for plotting um, these slope fields. So once we do that, then we're going to plot some particular solutions. Um, but in case you just want to see what happens here, um, we can just give this a run. And this is actually uh, what it will produce to us. So this is going to be the slope field for this particular equation. So notice that we have some solutions going downwards and then coming up. And then we have some values that sort of go up and then slowly go up. And then we have some values that sort of, sort of, you know, they go up a little bit, slant downwards, and then they go back up again. And these values sort of just go up. So that's what those little arrows are sort of um, telling you in terms of the flow of those uh, solutions. 
right? So we can give, we can, you know, conjecture some particular solutions that actually have these particular geometric patterns. Um, so what I want to do here is plot a couple particular solutions um, that actually fit quite nicely into this because, again, if you know the analytical solutions, you can plot particular ones on top of the slope field. And we also want to give this uh, plot a nice little title just in case you want to save this um, for reports or whatnot. All right, so when you want to plot on top of a figure, we want to always precede that with hold on, else it's going to erase whatever was there in the plot before. And again, I want to create an x vector from minus 2 with spacings of 0 0.01 to 2. Now, keep in mind I'm using the same exact vector as x up here because I've already used up this vector here. I don't really care about what it is here, so I'm just overwriting it in this particular case. And I'm changing my delta x to be a little bit more fine because I want these curves to be very, very smooth, right? So, you know, it's going to be a little bit more accurate than the actual slope field is because if you make your slope field delta x and delta y too small, it actually becomes a little bit too clustered in terms of interpreting what you're looking at. So the very first solution or particular solution that I want to plot is going to be plot x and then one particular solution is going to be 0 0.3 times e to the minus x and make sure you use the capital x if you're using the same coding as me and then sine of x divided by 2 minus cosine of x divided by 2 and let's plot the solution in black points. Actually let's do this in red points first. Right. So this is going to give us one particular solution. So if we just give this a run, that's going to give us our slope field um, with a particular solution shown here in red. And notice that it fits these curves very, very nicely. So that's one particular solution. And now let us assume that you want to plot another particular solution so you can look at a different um, set of phases or a different set of behaviors um, for various different initial conditions, uh, which is actually one of the more interesting parts of differential equations itself. So if you know the analytical solution for this differential equation sine x minus y, you'll be able to show that the analytical solution is going to be equal to c times e to the minus x plus sine x over 2 minus cosine x over 2, where that c uh, is dependent on whatever initial condition you give. So different initial conditions is going to give you different values of c's, right? So for example, if you change a different value of c here, for example, negative 0 0.2, you're going to get a different uh, analytical solution, a different particular solution uh, for this particular differential equation that also sh still should follow our slope field for our differential equation. So again, it's going to be e to the minus x plus sine of x over 2 minus cosine x over 2. And let's do this in a different color, say black uh, point. So once I give that a run, uh, then I'm going to have two different particular solutions uh, sketched on top of my uh, slope field, and both of them uh, appear to fit quite nicely, but notice that they have very different behaviors based on that initial condition change, right? So obviously if we have an initial condition down here, we have this sort of linear curve, and if we have an initial condition above, say about, you know, one or zero, um, then we dip down negative and then we start to increase very gradually. But notice, uh, regardless of the initial condition, we all end up at about the same exact point, which is actually pretty interesting, um, which in differential equations you get into the analytical um, viewpoints of what is actually going on there. So the last thing I want to do here is just uh, place a title into this. So nice little title just to make it nice for some project PowerPoints or something. Um, so this is going to be the slope field for, and then I'm going to do some latex coding just to make these equations really, really nice. So open uh, double dollar sign is like open parentheses for fancy uh, equations. Backslash frac is going to create vertical fractions. dy embrace is the top, dx on the bottom of that fraction, and that's going to be equal to backslash sign so we don't have any weird text looking things for sine x. And then we're going to have minus y, close double dollar sign since we're done with those fancy equations. And then we need, just need to tell MATLAB what interpreter uh, or how to interpret this expression and tell it to interpret this as latex code and it will do just that. So when we give this a run, this is going to give us our two particular solutions just like we already grabbed. And it's also going to give us our beautiful little title, slope field for y prime is equal to sine x minus y, and two particular solutions on this graph. So that is how you create slope fields for first order differential equations in MATLAB. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.